In the last lectures, I introduced the Hayashi model. Hayashi model is a disk model around the WTTS. In these lectures, I'd like to introduce uh, some more information of the Hayashi model. First of all, I'd like to explain the density distribution in Z coordinate. So we consider the gas molecules in a disk. There are two force, pressure force and gravitational force in the Z directions. So pressure force is directed outward because the density becomes a maximum at the mid planes. So pressure gradient is minus 1 over rho round p round z. And the another force is acting on these particles from the rotostars. Gravitational force depends on the distance. Distance between the gas particles to the protostar is given by the r square plus g squares. Gravitational force acting between the gas molecule to the protostar is expressed g m substars over r square plus g squares. This is approximately gm substance over r squares because the height of gas molecule is much much smaller than the radial distance from a protostars. We need to consider the projection of this gravitational force in the g direction m substance over r squares times g over square root r square plus g squares. So this is approximately gm substance over r cube times g. Then pressure gradient is balanced with the gravitational force in the g directions. So you can express these equations. We assume the optically thin disk. So this means a constant temperature in the g directions. So the constant sound speed in the g directions. So sound speed is expressed as c square is round p round loads. Change the round p round z using the sound speed. So this is equal to the c squares. Then you can substitute this expression and then transform to the next equation. Then you can integrate these equations. Log low equal minus b sub k squares over c squares 1 over r squares 1 over 2 g square plus integration constant of the c primes. And the v square over r square is expressed the angular velocity of the omega sub k squares. Then we use a boundary condition at a g equals 0. Density is expressed rho sub 0. It's equal to the C primes. So we can remove the C primes using the density at the mid planes. So rho is expressed rho sub 0. Exponential minus omega sub k squares over 2 C squares times G squares. Then we can introduce the scale height. H equals C over omega sub k. Then equation is expressed rho sub 0 exponential minus g squares over 2h squares. So this is the density distribution of gas in a disk. We are going to study the scale height of a disk. So as I explained, the scale height is expressed h equals c over omega k. Then c sound speed can be calculated round p round rows. Then you can substitute equation of state p equals rho kt over m. And using the constant temperature in the g direction. Then you could perform the, these derivatives to find the square root kt over m. Hayashi model, t is proportional to the r to the minus 1 over 2. Then sound speed is proportional to the r to the minus 1 over 4. And the omega sub k is angular velocities is expressed r to the minus 3 over 2. Then you can substitute this omega is here, c is here. Then h is proportional to the r to the minus 1 over 4 plus 3 over 2. Then it becomes r to the 5 over 4. So this is, is larger than 1. Scale height h is equal to 0 0.03 au times r over 1 au and the power index is 5 over 4. 0 0.03 au is much much shorter than the 1 au. So we could confirm the thin disk because h over r is much much smaller than 1. If you draw the scale height with the blue curves, light from the protostars can reach the surface of a disk because the power index of the 5 over 4 is larger than 1. So we call that such a disk is a flaring disk. In the Hayashi model, the light from a protostars can reach directly to the solid particles in the disk. But light might be absorbed during the propagation of the light from a protostar to the solid particles. 
the, it is very difficult to consider this path. Instead, we could consider the, the light from a protostar reaching to the surface of a disk. Then, the gas molecules on the surface heated. This heat is propagated to the G direction. So we could consider this instead of the standard Hayashi model. This is a modification of the Hayashi model. Instead of the optically thin disk, we could consider the optically thick disk model. This optically thick disk model was developed by Kusaka, Nakano, and Hayashi in 1970s. Energy from a star is received only on the surface of the disk. Then this heat is a propagate inside of a disk. This is an optically thick disk model. Then we'd like to find out how much energy is received by the surface of a disk. This is an optically flared disk, R, and then R plus DR. We'd like to consider these regions of a disk. Angle is expressed as thetas, D thetas. And the height to receive a light from a protostar is expressed G sub S as a function of R. G sub S is expressed R plus DR at this point. Then tangent thetas can be calculated G sub S over R. Then tangent theta plus D theta can be expressed G sub S R plus DR over R plus DR. Tangent theta plus round tangent theta round theta D theta. Then the right hand side also can be expressed with a Taylor series expansions. And then you can expand, this becomes, then tangent theta, you can substitute, this expression is here. We assume the very thin disk, this is nearly equal to the ones. From the, these equations, d theta can be expressed dr over r times round g sub s, round r minus g sub s over r. So we could find out the d theta's function of r. Then we'd like to find out the received energies. The light from the disk region can be received by the surface of the disk. Luminosity of a protostar divided 4 pi. This is a solid angle with a radius of the ones. Then you need to multiply 2 pi cosine theta d theta. And the cosine theta is very close to the ones again. Then you can find that the received energy equal L over 2 d theta. Received areas can be calculated 2 pi r dr. Received flux can be calculated equal L over 2 d theta divided by the area 2 pi r dr. Then it becomes L over 4 pi r squared round z sub s round r minus g sub s over r. We consider protostars. There is no contributions from the this part of our stars. So because the light coming from the only the upper part of a protostars. Flux from a protostars, F sub in, you need to multiply the 1 over 2. So this part can be expressed R times round, round R, G sub S over R. So we could calculate the flux from a protostars. Then this inward flux can be balanced with the outward flux. So outward flux can be calculated using the Stefan Boltzmann constant, sigma t to the fourth. So f sub in equal f sub out. The height of the surface of a disk g sub s, a factor of s times scale height, s times c over omega sub k. And the c is a function of t, 3kt over m. You can substitute this equation into the g sub s. Then you could calculate for the T, temperature of the disk given by this equation. So temperature at 1 AU, 156 kelvins. This temperature is lower than the 280 kelvins of the Hayashi models because limited amount of the radiations from the protostar is used to heat a disk. Then we'd like to find the uh, gas density at the mid planes using the surface density of a gas disk. And if you integrate volume density in the g direction, we could find the surface density of a gas disk. From the this integral, rho sub zero is expressed as sigma sub gas over square root two pi times scale height of the h. From the, this equation, you can find that the density at the mid plane is 1.4 times 10 to minus 9 
g r a m p e r cubic centimeters at r equal 1 AU. And the power index is a minus 11 over 4. You can write down the equation of motion in the R directions. Centrifugal force of the V square over R is balanced with the sum of the pressure gradient plus gravitational force in the R directions. So from the, these equations, you can find the rotational velocity of the V theta. V theta square is expressed as V sub k square times 1 minus eta. Eta is expressed as 1 over r omega square rho times round p round r. This part is expressed as rho c squares over r in the order of estimate. Then the rho is going to be cancelled out. Then r omega is a v. It's c square over V sub k squares. C square over V square becomes a H square over R squares. So this is much, much smaller than once. So we could find that the rotational velocity of a gas is a little bit slower than the Keplerian velocity. Even though the rotational speed of gas is a bit slower than the Keplerian velocities, it is crucial when we discuss the motion of solid particles in a disk. We will study the motion of the solid particle in the disk in the next lectures. And the final topic of this lecture is the spectral energy distribution of a disk. So, as I explained, temperature of a disk is、uh, dependent on the distance from a protostar. Then, spectral energy distribution of a disk is obtained by summing up all the energy flux from the, all the ring regions. Then you need to multiply the areas of the ring region the emitted energy of the B lambda. s B sub lambda is expressed with a Planck function. So you could consider the short wavelengths. This means Hc over Kbt is much, much larger than the wavelengths. Then we could perform the, this integral to become the 1 over lambda s To the 5 times exponential minus hc over lambda kvt. And the long wavelengths is the opposite case. hc over kvt is much, much smaller than the lambdas. Then the flux of the f sub lambda is proportional to the 1 over lambda to the fourth. And the intermediate case is proportional to the 1 over lambdas. So, if you draw a graph f sub lambda, the vertical line, for the lambda in the horizontal lines, in the very long wavelengths, it becomes 1 over lambda to the fourth. In the intermediate case, it becomes 1 over lambda. In the very、uh, short wavelengths, you can find、uh, the contribution from the protostars. Okay, this is the end of the, these lectures.